In this video, I'm going to be going over what exactly I went through start to finish making a full stack application and releasing it to the Google Play Store. I made this app using 100% JavaScript and it also acts as a full stack web application using the same code base. I'll be getting into the details of exactly how I did that and what tech stack I used to accomplish it later in this video. If you're curious about making your own web or mobile application, stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to be going over what mistakes I made throughout the process and what I wish I knew when I started. Let's quickly run through what the mobile app actually is and how it functions under the hood. So the website is called Abow Fitness or just Abow for short. And pretty much what the point of it is, is it's a tool to create custom workout routines through a drag and drop interface where you can search up exercises that you want to input into each day of your workout routine and you set the sets and reps of each exercise in each day. You can use other people's routines or you can create your own or you can choose from a list of routines that I've uploaded that I've collected over time from Reddit. Now, every time you wanna to go to the gym and have a workout, you just click use day and input the weights you achieve for each exercise on that day. And then all of those weights are saved to your profile over time. The reasoning behind creating this was not only just because I wanted a project to work on, but it's also because it's an alternative to using Google Sheets or just the notes app on your phone which is what I personally am doing currently and what I know a lot of my friends are doing as well. Something that I'm really proud of in this project was my ability to use the same code base for my website as well as my mobile application. This meant I was able to use the frameworks that I'm comfortable with like Next.js and write 100% of my code directed towards the web in React and then wrap that all up in an APK and submit it to the Google Play Store. These are all the tools that I use to build out both the website and the mobile application with the same code base. If you're not familiar with some of these icons or what they are, then don't worry, we're going to be going through it really quickly here and explaining what's going under the hood, how exactly this application works. The core of this application is AWS Amplify. Now, AWS Amplify is managing the entire backend of this application, and it's also communicating all of that information to our React frontend. AWS Amplify is orchestrating our storage, our authentication, our GraphQL API, as well as our Lambda functions behind the scenes. You can pretty much imagine the flow of the application from left to right. Starting at the very left, we have our raw database. Our raw data is stored in different tables in this database, which is then fed through at the second step in the GraphQL API. We're communicating to our GraphQL API using AWS AppSync, which is managed by AWS Amplify. All the tools in that third row I created using the Amplify CLI, which is pretty much just a central hub for all of my AWS services that I'm using, and I can update or create new resources as I need them through the AWS Amplify CLI. Amplify is hooked up and configured in our front end so that we can communicate to all of these resources through a bunch of different libraries that AWS offers. In the front end, I'm writing in TypeScript using React and also using Next.js on top of React to use things like server-side rendering. Up until this point, all of this infrastructure was just to support the website that I made. At this point in time, I wanted to create a mobile application, which is why I turned the website into a PWA which stands for Progressive Web App. Progressive Web Apps are downloadable from Chrome on Android devices, but you can't list Progressive Web Apps on the Google Play Store. This is where I use the library called Bubble Wrap, which is a recent creation from the Google Chrome team where you can wrap your Progressive Web Apps into an APK, which is deployable to the Google Play Store. Initially, the reason I made this website was to participate in a hackathon hosted by AWS Amplify. And I only had two weeks to build this project out. And unfortunately, I didn't place in the hackathon oh. and win the free t-shirt and the free money. But I did get a cool retweet from the AWS Amplify team retweeting out my project, which was a bit of a proud moment for me. I thought that was really cool of them to do. After the hackathon, I still continued developing the project as I really thought that it was a pretty decent idea. And that was validated when I started to post my project to various fitness subreddits. When I actually posted these things to Reddit though, my sign up process completely broke and it was a complete fucking disaster. What happened somehow, I don't know, the environment variable that told which table to put the users into completely blanked out. So people would sign up and the whole application would just break for them. So pretty much my first 20 users just had no experience at all and couldn't use the app whatsoever because they didn't get an account created for them when they signed up. At the time, it really wasn't that funny, but looking back on it, it's kind of hilarious. And the Reddit comments that I got on my posts are even funnier. This person commented, I'm not totally sure I didn't just get fish for my phone number on their sign up page. I'm a sysadmin and I'm 99% sure I just got scammed for my number and potential email and password combos. Oh man. 
Luckily, a lot of the comments were really kind after I fixed the sign up process though. And I actually got around 50 users from just one Reddit post, which meant to me that, you know, people are actually genuinely interested and would use a website or a mobile application like this, which really encouraged me and motivated me to work on it and make the improvements that I felt necessary for this to be, you know, releasable to more people in the general public. It really drove me over the finish line knowing that random people that I have no influence over spent the time to go to my website, create an account, create a workout routine. It really felt good to know that people found value in the thing that I created and it encouraged me to actually finish up the project and make it into something that was releasable. So over the next month, I completely redesigned the entire sign up process, made sure that no one thought I was scamming them into their email and password combinations and redesigned a bunch of features, added a bunch of bug fixes and just made it into a state where I was really personally happy to release something. That pretty much brings us to where we are today. My app is currently in review or the Google Play Store, and it's been in review for about one or two weeks. But what I'm gonna be going through now is what regrets that I have when I was making this app and what I would have done differently had I restarted it today. The number one thing that I would have done differently if I restarted a project like this today is I would have spent so much more time designing the screens and designing the UX of what the application was gonna be before I started coding. I don't think the overall UX of the application is too bad. I just really don't like the overall design. I think it looks really dry with the white on white or the gray on white or the gray on gray. <laughs> it just looks super dry. Every page is kind of the same. There's no real emphasis on what the user should be looking at. And I just really wish I spent more time designing the layout and designing the look of the application before I started coding. The thing is, I wouldn't have even spent that much more time had I spent a couple days or a week of my two week time frame in designing the layout and the look of the application because when I'm developing now, I have to think about the layout and the logic and how these interact with each other. I would much prefer just to have a spec on my second monitor and say, yup, this is exactly what the layout needs to look like. These are the colors, these are the spacing but instead I have to think about developing the whole UI, every single thing that interacts with one another in one sort of session. I think it's just super hard to get into a flow state when you have to fuck around with, you know, <laughs> margin bottom and uh, like, don't even get me started on how many bugs I had in the CSS. But I think that was the number one thing that I really regretted. I spent no time designing. I, you know, drew a couple things on a notepad and just started getting into the code, but uh, it is what it is. Um, still happy with the overall look and feel of the app. I just wish that I spent a bit more time in that area. The second thing I really wish I did was document the whole process throughout a little bit more because on my YouTube channel, I have now a two month gap where I spent pretty much 90% of my spare time after work developing this website and this mobile app. But I really wish that I made, you know, dev logs or something along the way that uh, I took you guys along the journey with me and the frustrations that I faced and the problems that I was having and things like releasing to Reddit and having a complete disaster. I think it would have been much better if that was a series rather than just a reflection kind of video. Before we wrap this video up, if you guys enjoyed the video, I would love if you hit the like button. And if you wanna see more content like this, please remember to hit the subscribe button as well because I'm gonna be coming out with even more programming content like this over the next couple months. Thank you so much for watching though. If you got this far in the video, I really do appreciate it and I hope you have a great rest of your day.